just a quick video about why I love Fright Night so much. Obviously all my 10 viewers from my last video will know that I got to meet the cast, which I never thought would happen, but I guess it was fate. I've actually got my book here that I got from a horror con. I don't know if it was 2019 or 2017, but it doesn't really matter. Um, and I absolutely love the artwork and I've got a protective sleeve to put it in. So don't worry guys, it's not going to get bent or anything. So it's got everything in it, basically. I sound like I'm sponsoring it. <laughs> I'm really not. But it's got behind the scenes, special effects, inspiration for the movie, inspiration for the characters, every aspect of behind the scenes. And it's even got um, Fright Night 2 in there, which I also have a newfound respect for, which I will talk about, bear with. So I was 13, I think. 13 12 i was in year seven or eight which sounds like ages ago 26 now and my brother was listening to the fright night soundtrack in his room now i followed everything my brother liked and it was mainly horror because nothing scares us so we could watch stuff like that um i think i was already obsessed with the nightmare on elm street by that point and things like that and he was listening to the Fright Night soundtrack in his room and he was listening to Give It Up by Evelyn Champagne King, which is the music that plays in the infamous dance scene, which is very comical. Um, and I was like, what's this? And I kind of like almost turned my nose up, I remember. And then I thought, this is going to become a li lifelong obsession. So I don't know why I did that. And he was like, you need to watch the movie. So we'll sit down and watch it. And we did, and I absolutely was loving it, but for some reason we couldn't watch the end. I think he had to be up for work or something like that. He's older than me, so I was in school. And um, I just remember the next day thinking about Fright Night. I need to watch the end of Fright Night to find out what happens. And I told him, and he was like, just watch it. You don't have to watch it with me. Put it on, see what you think. Ended up watching the rest of it, absolutely became obsessed. Watched it again and again. I think I watched it four times that day. I mean, I still, I don't do that now. <laughs> I still love it, but, you know, I used to watch it every day and he was like, this is going to be your new obsession. And it was. Absolutely loved it. So I'm going to talk about some of the elements of why I love it. So the first element is the music. I'm a music lover. A music, like, soundtrack can make or break a movie. Fright Night was amazing anyway. But that was just the icing on the top. I think a good soundtrack can make or break a movie for me. A movie can be crap, but if, if it has a good scene with some music or something memorable and you like the song, I think it just lifts it. But this was just the icing on the cake for Fright Night. The instrumental music is very unique. It's just, it's just Fright Night. It just sets the tone for the entire movie. Um, You've got Come To Me, the instrumental music, and you've got Dream Window, which is, you know, when there's the naked lady getting bitten through the window, which was a bit like, what's going on? <laughs> but um, two awesome instrumentals that just set the tone for the movie. And um, then you've got the actual music that plays, like the actual songs. So the dance scene in the club, which is arguably like one of the most memorable scenes you've got four songs that are absolute bangers you've got armies of the night which is when they're running away from jerry trying to get into the club then you've got good man in a bad time where jerry walks in and kind of surveys the area you've got give it up by evelyn champagne king which i think was like the first song i heard off it what my brother was listening to in the dance scene which i found comical um because when she's looking in the mirror and she's dancing with him but he's not there and she's just a bit like what's going on i always found that funny um and then you've got you can't hide from the beast inside by autograph and that's when it all kicks off people are running out the club charlie tries to punch jerry and gets his hand kind of crushed um four songs in one scene and when they come on spotify you dance in you don't skip those songs so the music because i'm such a music lover just kicks the movie up a notch um and i'm the same with all movies you know i i can listen to a soundtrack and um it makes the movie you know you get the emotions from from the music of what the movie's supposed to be 
so the music absolutely 100% is my favourite part um, the second point is the characters characterisation I don't necessarily know if a lot of it was meant to be as comedic on the page but I think the actors made it so just with the delivery some of the lines are very memorable you know cut it out evil it's not funny I think she sounds a bit English there <laughs> she's just so fed up by that point she's just like my boyfriend thinks there's a vampire I've got evil Ed pretending to be bit I ain't got time for this and that's what's so comical about that scene you're so cool Brewster his dinner's in the oven so many memorable things in the script and the characterization and you really root for the characters apart from poor evil Ed who didn't quite make it but um, I remember thinking I hope they're all okay do you know what I mean because you go on a journey with these characters and it's it's comedic and it's light-hearted to a point and it's it's funny but there is um also some quite sad elements as well I mean another thing I was going to say is the special effects there's the scene where evil Ed is a werewolf gets staked goes back to being a teenage boy again that movie's that um scene is quite poignant because again the characterization you get a sense that ed's been bullied most of his life even charlie he doesn't like to be called evil you know we forget that and then they keep calling him evil because he's just not like anybody else and that's okay but um, high school kids aren't going to see it that way so you get the sense that he's just been ostracised his entire life and bullied which is why he tries to take a way out with Jerry who says look you've been bullied I can show you what I can do you'll be better than everybody else and he takes that easy way out and it doesn't help so you get the sense that this character tragically wasn't going to get anywhere in life basically so the scene where he is a werewolf and I love the slow motion shot of him running down the hallway to Peter Vincent the scene where he gets staked and it's a very long scene and it's quite disturbing you can see like the the look in Peter Vincent's eyes where he just completely goes pale and he's just used to all this being fiction and when it's not fiction it's right in front of his eyes he's just like what is going on and then ed reverts back to just being this vulnerable teenage boy naked on the floor which is very sad out of nowhere it's just kind of like the movie scene is you know is a comedy but that scene to me was always very shocking and you know you would be the same way as peter vincent would be like what is going on so that you know you kind of realise that that's a human life. Like he's tried to get a way out and just think I can be better than everybody. I can finally make it to the top, and he and he doesn't. Um, so I would have loved Ed to live, but you know, he's, he, in at the end of the day, he's a tragic character. Although he's hilarious, and it, you know, it's not meant to be taken too seriously. But that's what I always saw the kind of symbolism, and he's just on the floor, and he's just a human again. Um, as we all are so characterization peter vincent is hilarious the movie doesn't poke fun at the genre it just kind of harkens back to the old vampire movies i mean obviously with the name peter vincent we know we know why uh, it kind of makes fun of itself it doesn't really make fun of the audience which is why it's so fun um so the characterization you really root in for the characters and every character has their own little um, thing going on um, that seems to just get exploited by Jerry, which is just funny. Um, and the special effects, obviously, with I think the werewolf thing is the most memorable for me. Um, I did watch number two when I was younger and didn't see the appeal because I thought oh well Amy's not in it and Jerry's not in it the only ones who were consistent are Peter Vincent and Charlie um so you know with that being said at, at the time I didn't really appreciate it but I recently watched number two and had like a newfound respect for it again the instrumental music somebody's been good enough to put it on YouTube very underrated 
you know, I can appreciate it a lot more now. And I thought, oh, this is actually on its own. It's, it's a good movie. You know, the music and the... It's still in the, you know, it's in the Fright Night universe. It's linked to Jerry. Um, I would have liked to, them to explain Amy's absence, though. I mean, I liked Charlie's new girlfriend. I, went, I will say that. I mean, he's a teenage boy, so he'll move on to different girls and then he'll be in love with this one one week and then you know that's that's to me that's not entirely unrealistic um i would have liked them to explain it apparently there was a deleted scene where they explained that amy kind of fell in love with an older guy which is kind of you know the jerry thing and she went off with him i wish they'd have just put a little scene like that in but it ended up being cut um Fright Night, is it? I think it's Fright Night New Blood. I watched, I've only seen it once and it's kind of a reimagining. Jerry's a female. Um, still good. It's got Amy and Charlie, but they're different, in a different setting, different storyline. I quite liked it. I didn't think it was bad. They go to Rome in that and um, Rome's one of my favourite places, so maybe that's why I liked it. Um, it's still part of Fright Night, which I like. I like anything to do with Fright Night. The one I couldn't get on board with was the remake in 2011. I was quite looking forward to it again because it's something to do with Fright Night and I'm like, oh, they're bringing something Fright Night back. Didn't work for me. They haven't captured the atmosphere. Again, you're not going to get the 80s back. I understand that. They could have done so much more. I just don't understand. The soundtrack, well, there wasn't a soundtrack. There was just nothing in there that you could grab and hold on to or that symbolised anything. Um, although I did just find out that the actor who played Charlie passed away and he was only young, so I was like, that's really sad, you know. But other than that, um, didn't do it for me. They actually asked about the remake um, in Manchester and William Ragsdale said, oh, they did a remake, like, as a joke, and everybody was laughing. But it was more, again, you can't do an out-and-out -out remake with a movie like that. It had its own elements, it was more of a reimagining, but I couldn't get on board with it. You know, my brother was a bit like, oh, well, it's all right for what it is. And I was like, yeah, it is all right for what it is, but it's never going to be Fright Night. So, yeah, that's my opinion on the other ones, really. Number two is growing on me, but number one will always be the OG. And I am going to get my poster framed when I'm not doing a nine hour shift because it's driving me insane at the minute. Um, I've actually got a poster up there. It's like I'm obsessed with it. I'm <laughs> Not as much now, but it is always going to be one of my favourite movies. Um, so yeah, definitely the music, definitely the, the characterisation. There's some poignant moments in there which are just thrown in. And, um, you know, the evil Ed scene was unexpected. Um, the humour which kind of just jumped off the page, so many memorable lines, you know, the atmosphere um, when, you know, it's windy and the house is kind of rocking and it kind of foreshadows that something's going down. If there's one thing, I always say if there's one thing that movie taught me, it is keep yourself to yourself. If I saw a guy <laughs> biting a naked woman across from me, on a night, at midnight, I'd be like, nah, I don't want out to do with that. It's clearly not human. We can't just call the police and have this guy get arrested. So I, I did see a meme recently and it was like, if anything, you know, just, just keep yourself to yourself. Charlie hadn't have interfered. I mean, I know there wouldn't have been a movie if Charlie hadn't have interfered. That's the point. He's trying to do the right thing all the way through. Ends up getting his friend's hair. But in real life, you would just kind of be like, yeah, no, you do what you want. It's absolutely fine. And then, you know, the most annoying part is when his mum invites Jerry in. It's like, OK, so all I have to do really is not invite this guy in. No problem. We just don't invite him in. Then he can't he can't do anything. And then he's sitting in the living room, um, all seductive, <laughs> and, <laughs> which I just found hilarious. Um and you know charlie just thinks well that's it I'm, I'm brown bread so that's that's always the funniest thing to me is just he 
he thinks I've got to do the right thing here. I, I've got to do, you know, and he ends up just causing a big mess, getting everybody into this this thing, including Peter Vincent. It was just a bit like, what, what, like why, why now? What's happening? So it's comedic. It's it's uh, memorable. The music is just top tier, and it's eighties. It's just eighties. Everything about it, obviously, is eighties and and um just very memorable one that you put on and you just never get bored of so yeah that is why i love fright night and i was fortunate enough to meet the cast when i found out that they were coming to manchester it was just like i was already on the train as i say i was just like can we go now to to meet these people and you do get the sense that they absolutely love what they do they like to come and meet the fans because it would be a lot different if you know i met somebody and they was a bit arrogant and it would really like they say never meet your idols i mean in this case favorite actors but everybody was lovely and it was a good experience and it kind of reinforced my love for the the movie and the kind of horror comedy aspect so yeah just a quick video about why I love it um, and I know lots of people have had the same opinions as well so yeah thanks for listening to me ramble once again about Fright Night I'm like do you want to hear about Fright Night because <laughs> bear with I can tell you a lot about it um, so yeah just thanks for listening to me ramble and I'll probably be putting more rambling things up about different movies and probably be, might do some singing because I like to sing as well um, so yeah have a good day, stay safe um, and be good. So.